Hello, my name is Zach Berry. I'm a machine learning solution specialist at Red Hat. Today I'll be discussing DevOps versus MLOps versus AIOps and a, a, a disambiguation and what this means for the discipline of information technology. The, the agenda today, um, a, a little bit on my bio biography and why that might be relevant. Um, a background of the uh, the time, you know, the situation that we're presented with, and a uh, glossary and disambiguation of some terms and discussion of how those terms interrelate with each other, and then my attempt to peer a little bit into the future. So my biography, uh, I started out as a Linux admin in the dot-com era, um, and I was on a DevOps team uh, back then, I've come to realize, uh, before uh, the term DevOps was coined. Uh, I spent a year and a half as a trainer, and then uh, a decade as a solution architect for Red Hat, working with strategic accounts, mostly out here in the in the Western U.S. And the last two and a half years, I've been a solution sales specialist here for Red Hat. And the, the reason I bring this up is just to say that this presentation is very much from the perspective of an IT veteran, and is uh, mostly targeted towards what other IT veterans might need to learn um, about data science and data engineering to do their job. Uh, I'm not a data scientist or a data engineer, uh, so I'm going to be um, trying to um, communicate what I've learned about that field uh, to uh, an, an IT audience. So a little bit of the background here. Um, earlier IT transitions uh, that I think are of note here, um, proprietary software towards open source software, uh, big iron um, towards community uh, commodity hardware, uh, physical servers towards virtual servers, uh, a, th a throw it over the fence um, methodology towards DevOps, and you know throw it over fence means that just code releases would just uh, be produced um, in a sort of uh, in a um, behind the veil and then would appear uh, to operations teams and then for them to run, and if they didn't run in production, that was the problem of the, of the operations team. There's been a move from uh, waterfall um, application uh, development towards uh, agile me methodologies, of which, which there are several, and app configuration and automation um, has moved very much towards containerization, towards orchestration, and, and this isn't to mean that um, uh, automation isn't a, a key thing, like obviously that's still in place, but um, fewer and fewer organizations are trying to use a configuration tool um, to automate how application deployments work. Um, you know, containerization seems to be a much better tool for that challenge. And there's been a move towards on-demand uh, cloud-style resources, right? And, and I don't know what to call the pre uh, cloud time. I'd be interested for interested in feedback as to what we should call the pre-cloud era, and I'm defining cloud here um, in this case as uh, as a resources being available on demand, where you just run a command or call or call some sort of API, and the resource becomes available uh, rather than having to file a ticket and then through some sort of human action. Um, the, the resource is, is provisioned, right? And cloud, of course, means a lot of other things, but that's the de definition I'm using here. And data, well, data transmission, storage, um, they're all, they're, um, there's a lot happening in, in that area as well. I'm gonna leave that out of scope of this talk because I, I, I don't wanna bite off too much um, with, with one discussion, okay? So we have a set of earlier transitions here, and I guess my point here is that I believe that the transition towards using artificial intelligence, data science, and machine learning techniques is going to, um, in hindsight, in a few years, be seen as a transition at the same, uh, of the same magnitude uh, as, as these. So, so what's what's next, right? What what are the um, what are the questions we should be at? we should be asking our, ourselves here? Uh, what can we learn from the earlier transitions, and not just that what do we learn as to, yeah, it's a good idea to use DevOps, but what do we learn about how people and organizations work? Uh, and, and what are the lessons um, uh, that are, what are the sort of deeper lessons from those earlier transitions that we should be taking to heart? And um, how, how should we apply those lessons to our benefit today? 
a little bit more background here. Um, there's a concept that I think is very much relevant and is is not um, is not commonly discussed in IT, but I, I think it should be. Uh, and that's, that's the concept of the Red Queen. And this comes from Lewis Carroll, um, uh, uh, from uh, Alice Through the Looking Glass. Um, and uh, there's a scene in the book, and, and obviously the film adaptations as well, where um, where Alice is running, uh, running away from the Red Queen and her minions. And she's finding that um, as fast as she is running, that the, the ground underneath of her is moving just as fast. And so even though she's, she's running, she's not actually going anywhere. Well, this, this uh, idea has been picked up um, in the context of evolutionary bi biology, uh, which is where, where I know it from. And it, it discusses this idea that um, any sort of advance, uh, any sort of forward, forward motion should be seen in the context of a relative position with your, against your competitors, right? So all of us are always running hard, um, but in, um, but the, the, that really just creates stasis unless you can um, gain some sort of advantage vis-a-vis -vis your co competition or if your competition is somehow moving faster than you. And I, I knew this concept well from a book called The Red Queen by, uh, by Matt Ridley. So I, I think this is, a, is an important idea, and I'm going to come back to it a few different times. So uh, let's do a glossary and a, and a somewhat arbitrary disambiguation of some of some terms. So um, first off, on on DevOps, and there are a lot of different definitions for DevOps. Let me give you the one, the one that I'm using here. Um, DevOps is an enterprise capability for continuous software delivery that enables clients to seize market opportunities and reduce time to customer feedback. Okay, great. So continuous delivery, seize market opportunities when they're available, reduce time to customer feedback. Okay, that's from IBM's Kevin Minnick in, in 2013. Other DevOps features of note uh, that I, uh, from other definitions that I think are wor worthwhile to bring in here, um, many definitions discuss the ability to experiment, fail, and learn as a small team. Clearly defined uh, external com commitments and expectations measure outcomes, and uh, match responsibility with capability. OK, so how does Agile fit in here also, right? And, and so Agile and DevOps are two distinct concepts. Um, but a Agile uh, very often, um, or DevOps very often relies on Agile. Um, so the two should be discussed here, though the, 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 the separation between the two should also be acknowledged. And there are three stances here from the, the Agile uh, Manifesto uh, principles that I think are, are worth pointing out. So number one, deliver working software frequently uh, from a couple of weeks to a couple of months with preference towards shorter time scale. Business people and developers must work together daily throughout the project. Build projects around motivated individuals and give them the environment um, and support that they need and trust them to get the, the job done, OK? So that's DevOps uh, and Agile. Um, so Agile, I think, you know, should be thought of here in its, in its broadest sense, um, not just in terms of uh, you know, how, how it could be used to deliver uh, you know, a web application or a microservice. And you know, the example that I'd like to give here is that um, uh, in, the, uh, in the time of COVID-19, um, with uh, social distancing, and in my case, two parents working white-collar jobs from home, um, and uh, our, my, uh, my daughter attending a, a hastily organized kindergarten, um, I attempted, or well, am currently still attempting, uh, to implement uh, uh, agile methodology uh, in terms of how we handle our daily, uh, our daily workload. So you know, as an example, task list um, on, on the right here. And you know, we have our, our, our daily 7 a.m. Uh, stand up, you know, review the backlog, and, and review and uh, add new tasks and prioritize. So, you know, what do we learn from this? Well, we learned certainly that um, individual talents are, are, are better for certain tasks, right? Individual st specialties still, still matter. Um, you know, my daughter is much better with Mandarin. I'm much better with Salesforce.com. Uh, and that we, you know, we learned about our constraints um, via failure and, mo and moving forward. So uh, the, the reason I, 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 I give this example is let's, let's try to think of Agile 
in a, in a very broad sense here, right? Let's 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 think of this as just as a way to take in incoming ta tasks, be able to provide feedback and set expectations about what we're going to be able to accomplish uh, in a given set of time. A, a word here on data science, artificial intelligence, machine learning, and deep learning. Um, you know, uh, deep learning is a subset of machine learning, which is a subset of artificial intelligence, a subset of data science. In, for most of what we're going to talk here, I'm going to talk about here, I'm going to focus on machine learning, um, just because I think it's the easiest in many cases to connect to um, uh, connect back to business and, you know, is the, is the most widely applicable um, uh, currently. And so let's, let's review just some of the real basics of machine learning, right? So number one, we set goals, we gather, prepare data. Um, uh, you know, mark the data out uh, um, based on what we what we know of it, uh, and then we use that source data to generate a model, um, deploy that 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 model, um, start applying uh, novel data to it, um, in, implement um, interfaces to those models. Right, basically, like how how is the model actually called in pro in process. And then we monitor the performance of, of the model, right? Is it is it giving the right kind of resort, results? Is it actually you know performing well in terms of like a you know the context of regular software performance? So, you know, is it is it efficient? And then we 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 loop that back into um, uh, um, develop into ML model development going forward. And then we also you know would would take what we've learned and. Uh, provide feedback to the business, right? Because remember, we're supposed to be working here in um, in uh, a tight connection with the uh, the business that we serve. So let's let's disambiguate some terms here: DevOps, MLOps, and AIOps. So MLOps, uh, I'm defining here as applying DevOps techniques to the challenges that are well addressed with machine learning, and I'm and I'm defining it as MLOps is, as being applied to the challenges, um, uh, using DevOps to apply to the challenges rather than applying DevOps to machine learning, right? Because remember, it's the outcomes that we're concerned about, um, not not as much the the process. So if we find that um, machine learning is not actually the best way to address a problem, then you know we would surface that and, and give that as as a as appropriate feed, feedback and and perhaps. Um, uh, qualify out that particular challenge, and then AI ops as defined as applying machine learning back on back on DevOps and IT itself. So the and I admit there's a certain turtles all the way down um, a situation that that's that's created here, where we certainly could have could be using ML ops to uh, to solve business challenges, and then once we had all of these great machine learning t techniques available to the to us. We might, um, in, a, in addressing our agile backlog, uh, attempt to um, use those same techniques on site reliability or on, on um, something related to how, how the um, how our software operated its, itself. Um, you know, based on the data and telemetry that the application itself was throwing off. Right. So MLOps is the you know using DevOps for machine learning related challenges and AI ops is applying these techniques back on IT itself, right? Back on IT and DevOps itself. So uh, peering into the future, right? So what have, what have we learned from this? Um, what, sh what should we be thinking about looking forward? So uh, first off, a, a quick digression. Um, I'm talking a lot about the, the impact of machine learning and, and artificial intelligence on IT. And commonly, I hear uh, sentiments related to, oh, that you know, um, uh, that the basically the robots are coming for our jobs, right? That uh, you know, a lot of what's done in AI in um, it, in IT is going to be obsolete because of machine learning. And and I think that's definitely not going to happen. First off, um, you know, AI is great for some problems, and it's it's terrible for others. So if we imagine um, just a, a customer service line, it's it's very very difficult for a computer, you know, for or for artificial intelligence, to um, act on a phone uh, as though uh, it was an actual person, right? Like you can almost always tell, right? It's very hard to pass the Turing test uh, when it comes to, um, to to speech, right? 
And and something like that, you know, just having a conversation, communicate communicating with voice with another person is an is an area where that humans do extremely well and and completely naturally. Okay, so that's that's perhaps a bad um, choice of a um, a, an area uh, to focus on with with AI. What maybe would be make better sense would be to supplement what humans are able to do, right? And this is you know there's the huge field of natural language processing, right, of being able to um, take incoming speech or incoming text and, and parse it and figure out um, what's going on. So perhaps rather than trying to have a robot answer the phone directly, uh, instead you could have um, uh, uh, artificial intelligence uh, listen to a phone call as it's being held by a customer service rep, for example, and be searching a database of known answers and automatically presenting those, those answers to the human so that they can get through it very quickly. Or, um, you know, being able to, um, you know, recognize uh, things about the con the the conversation for um, for later uh, review. Um, you know, perhaps being able to to sense the emotional state of the of the caller or the emotional sense of the state of the of the customer service rep, and being being able to improve efficiency. Um, so again, this is a this is a red queen situation, right? A robot plus a human will beat a human or a robot acting independently of one another. And even if you take the sort of the worst case scenario of this, where humans um, perhaps only apply a marginal benefit over what robots are able to do uh, on their own, um, that marginal difference um, in, in a Red Queen situation is, um, you know, uh, will make a difference, right? Um, you know, a marginal difference makes can make a big difference over time. So we are going to continue to see cases where artificial intelligence will supplement what we do um, ra and improve what we do rather than replace us uh, entirely. I, I, I feel strongly on, on this question. So where do these machine learning tools and te techniques lead IT? So there's a major shift happening in IT right now that's similar to the shift that happened when other industries adopted uh, lean techniques um, that they got from the manufacturing uh, industry. And you know, lean, um, you know, perhaps sometimes referred to as the, as the Toyota way, uh, way to drive efficiencies um, in, in manufacturing, drive down cost, uh, imp improve performance and throughput. An example here that I, I, just, I know just because of my, um, my, my father spent his career doing this is, is medical laboratories. So if you think about uh, the way medical laboratories worked a generation ago, um, there were individual lab tech techs um, that were basically people that were trained um, to work as scientists that were uh, performing experiments over and over again and um, you know, trying to take, you know, take samples and um, identify the, some property uh, or another of that sam sample. Um, but it really worked as a very uh, sort of cottage industry model. And over the last generation, uh, that has, industry has changed dramatically over towards more of a manufacturing model where as much as possible it has been automated, um, humans are used in the areas where um, humans work much better than, than machines, um, certainly in times when the, the human's visual sense is, is better than what a, uh, a machine is able to do. Machine, uh, humans supervise, um, humans provide um, quality assurance and, uh, you know, and, and, and monitor everything. But if you can you know, think about the testing volumes that are required today um, in, the, in the world of COVID, um, that never would have been possible using the old model. It's only through um, this move towards lean manufacturing techniques that um, the laboratories, medical laboratories are, are able to scale to the levels that they, uh, that they are today. And I think something similar is, uh, is afoot for IT, right? So, so far, uh, only challenges with very high return on investment have been tackled using machine learning and AI, AI techniques. So on aggregate, right, across the whole industry, um, massive gains are still available, right? So, um, you know, machine learning techniques can improve the efficiency of your garden, right? So there certainly are, are many areas within IT that are yet to be improved. 
The knowledge of machine learning techniques is becoming vast, much more widespread, and the cost of the resources and tools needed to implement machine learning are falling dramatically due to com commodity hardware and open source software. And really what this means is, is that we're on the cusp of something great as, a, as an industry. Um, using machine learning, the variety of problems that we'll be able to address with applications uh, and IT techniques, the, the number of challenges, the type of challenges that we will have accessible to us are going to grow dramatically. Right? We're just going to be able to do more with IT than we can right now. And that's, that's really the exciting thing. So what are the risks? What are the things that we should be concerned about our, of ourselves? What are the questions we should be asking ourselves as IT professionals? Um, and so I think the, the big question that's outstanding is, will we integrate data science techniques into IT in the light of what we have already learned from DevOps, right? Or will data science uh, be, uh, be off to the side as a sort of separate uh, priesthood? Uh, will um, will will data scientists uh, throw um, you know throw machine learning models over the wall um, to operations teams just to run um, and not have uh, tight uh, feedback loops and not be you know will, will um, the people creating the models um, not be part of the feedback loop that leads back to the customer or leads back to the stakeholder um, and will will basically will data science practitioners become uh, you know estranged from IT in the same way that IT is unfortunately estranged from its own customers and, and from the business it, ser it serves. So those are the risks that, that we have in front of us, and um, I, I think a, a lot of what Red Hat is going to discuss uh, going forward in the rest of these presentations is how to prevent that from happening. So thank you very much for your time. My name is Zach Barry. It's been a pleasure speaking with you.